There he is. Hey! The first guest in the history of What's this What's up, program. buddy? Uh, How are you, man? So Have I really never been in studio? I don't think you so. You sure about that? I mean, you've corrected me on things that I thought was right. I could be wrong. Like, even the poster in my office, you're like, that's your yes, story is yes, wrong. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't I want to do that. Well, do you remember any of this? You don't remember Is being it here. always been like this? No, it's evolved. Did you ever have my bobblehead? No, I don't have a bobblehead of yours. Why not? Do I have? I got one. I actually have a picture. Most of you. recently made one not, uh, about a year ago. Oh, so then I definitely don't have it. But I have a picture of you, like an old school WC picture that sometimes I put up over here, like huh. a, a portrait of your face. It's so. I don't know the last time I saw you in person. Well, you look great. You, you look, look great too. Same. Yeah, so do you. You look like you're actually like. You, I feel like you're very muscular. Well, yeah. Like how much you weigh right now? If you don't mind me asking, I feel like you're thick, like you're strong. You know, I used to have a habit of stepping on the scale a couple times a day throughout for like 20 years. Okay. And I don't step on a scale anymore. You I think someone actually borrowed my scale and never gave it back. And so I'm probably about 163. But you're in shape. Oh, yeah. You're always Come in the on, gym. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll never, be, you'll never be like one of those fighters who balloons, you know? Yeah, I don't think so. You just don't have that in your DNA. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I got all sorts of nutrition stuff. You know, I was one of the the guys that helped put the the nutrition program, like, on the right track with Trifecta Nutrition back in the day. For, for we're the, the first ones to do the the right, I remember. Trifecta Nutrition was was the ones to do that. I've got you know nutrition's my gig, baby. I'm not messing around with that. How about this guy? Slava Isn't that Claus. amazing? What a guy! But I tell you, I said, hey, yeah, one of my favorite human beings, Slava Claus. I actually watched a. He sent me a uh, <laughs> a video, and I'll have to send it to you. You can play later, of him dancing in his in his like home gym. Oh yeah, he's a great dancer. And and I was like, this is my guy. And he didn't really speak much English at the time, but I was like, this energy. And he said, and he sent me on the text afterwards, not your regular Russian guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's true. No, his post fight <laughs> dancing is great. Yeah, yeah. His whole you demeanor see is great. Video. This, he still had hair back in the day uh, when he was doing this one and. When, when, it's been nuts. Uh, I think we're seeing some of it right here. Is this it? Hey, oh no, that's not the one. I that's I gotta send it to you. <laughs> here, here's some more dancing. This guy. Bro, this guy's this guy's been through what so much. Oh, look at that. I mean, you guys didn't get to get in too much of all the stuff he's been through, but he's got awesome and he's like a historian. He like knows he I, he's like when we're having conversations, he's telling me all the history of this and that and the other thing, and it's like man, it's like just general history. Again. General history, mostly with his country right, right, right. and everything surrounding him, like right. makes us Americans seem a little bit ignorant. When he comes to you, he was talking about that day, like I think I'm done, and you're like, no, 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 I told you, you know, UFC. What, I'm sure you've been in this position before, yes. right? When a fighter says I, I'm done, yeah, and they're almost looking to you for that reassurance. Yeah, how tough of a spot is that? Well, sometimes you have to be frank and, and let him know that's the case, but for him, that's not the case, and it's funny because he. He came and he had shaved yeah. his head, his face. I don't know if he had shaved like his eyebrow even maybe or something. And I was like, and he's like, hey, uh, I think I'm losing my mind. Oh my <laughs> you know? God. He's like, he's like, I'm just thinking I, I need to be fighting for big money. I'm one of the best fighters in the world. And I've been harping on, on Sean Shelby and I've been harping on Dana. And um, I actually had to have a sit down with, with Shelby because we were kind of going through some stuff at the time. And I was like, listen, I tried to get Slava in before he had any fights. And they did that for a girl that was like a good a good person, but I couldn't find any fights for him. We had him boxing, because we could get fights boxing. He's beating up all these great boxers. Um, and then, um, so I was like, dude, just hold on. And I called Dan, and I'm bitching and moaning to Dana and everything else. And then, and then Shelby hit me up and was like, hey, I got the right matchup for you. And can he step in short notice? I said, yeah. Let's go. And that was such a big relief for me to be able to tell him that because right. it was it like felt amazing. Oh yeah, because he'd been there since 2017, and he wanted to fight on 2000, 2017. You said a year. I held him out for two and a half years. Oh wow! Because he came from you, like tell him to sprawl, he would jump. He had zero zero grappling. Like right. it was completely foreign to him. And he's a skinny right, kickboxer right. guy. That that so that's a whole different animal. But uh, I mean, he's a, he's a champion. When you have a champion, you have a champion all the way through and through. You're a champion at what you do. You know, champions they find a way, and he's that's what he did. Th those times where you've had to tell someone, yeah, it's probably best if you don't pursue this. Yeah, that's got to be. Well, usually it's like they've convinced their girlfriend or wife to support them when they're 
dicking off, not taking it serious. Right. Okay. Not, you know, that kind of thing. Like I just, and I don't ever try to discourage someone. I'll say, okay, look, let me give you some realistic things. Like here's some markers, go compete in a jujitsu wrestling, blah, blah, blah. You know, here, go, here's, here's, uh, Eric Cortez, Frosty, he's 15. See if you can beat him in wrestling, boxing, or jujitsu. He's your same. He's actually a little lighter than you. I had one guy. I put Corey McKenna on when she was when he when he was 18, and he was like adamant he wanted to fight and like, but you don't understand. I I've got it, you know. And I'm like, okay, here's Corey McKenna. She's a 115 pound, 18 year old girl. Like, let's see how you do. What happened? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Corey's a killer. Oh yeah, of course. Wow. And but, then did he leave? Uh, he stuck around for a while doing the general classes and whatnot, but like for like a, a fighter that is like, that has put in the time and I tell him that's all on them. Like I've got a guy, Alex Sandoval, who fought in the UFC, had the worst luck ever. One of the, always did the right things. You know, he's coaching for us, but, um, he's a guy where I'm like, Hey, try longer, try longer. He, he would run on the weekends and he was, he did all the right stuff. He was there before there was a weight class for him. He eventually got in to the UFC. Then they, you know, he has one, he went one and two, uh, but super exciting fights. Then they're going to get rid of the 125 pound weight class, but it took him forever to get there. And then the pandemic happens. Um, like that kind of situation. I'll be like, bro, like stay a little longer. And sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, but, um, yeah, I try to be as positive as I can, but r realistic. Right. You have to be. And I've got a huge team. I mean, our, our team is literally like a hotbed of talent from all over the world now. How many pros? I don't know, probably 60 some odd pros. But wow. like the exciting thing, like if you look at, like I just talked about Eric Frosty Cortez, he he could go pro tomorrow, he just turned 18. Wow. And, you know, I've he, he just had that super fight with Adrian Lee's, uh, is it Adrian Lee out of Hawaii? Angela Lee. Angela Lee's little brother, little brother he's yes, 17, yes, 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 he's yes. about to sign, sign with one, one Frosty yeah. and him had a, could have gone anybody's way, and Frosty went up a weight class to go fight him in Hawaii, tough man. Um, I've got uh, Aaron from India, she's 18, I've got uh, Sefala, he's, he's from Chechnya, from Russia, and he's uh, just turned 20 and he's already can go with all the guys. How I've are you got, getting these guys, or are they coming to you? Do you recruit? They us. Oh they just, no, I don't recruit anybody. I, I learned a long time ago, you don't try to convince people to do this sport. You don't try to convince them to be on your team. Like They just come to you, like his story. Here. Yeah, Sefala is a killer. Aaron, she came over here all the way from India. She's uh, part of what I want to talk about today is is what we got have going on with Sac State, Sacramento State, the university. Tell us. But Aaron is, she came here from India, got her classes at Sac State all around their pro practice. We have... Uh, Isaac Thompson came as a teen from, from Australia. We have Mick Debeck Orobe, who's, who's from Kyrgyzstan. We have, uh, we have probably 15, 16 different countries on any given day in the gym um, that are you know, following their hearts and their dreams. And so it's been pretty awesome. I mean, I, I love to see you know, us be a hotbed for like an open place for people to come and follow their dreams. You know, in China, we have Song, Sumo, and Yan, three of the, the top Chinese fighters in the world that are all on our team have moved here with us. And, um, you know, Corey McKenna, Mason Jones, and, um, you know, Malat from Canada, and, and the list goes on of all these different people. We have all these Brazilians that are with us. Uh, it's 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 really cool to come in and have this mesh pod of of people. Oh, my, my boy Stav! I right. got to introduce you to Stav from Israel. He's Legend. nineteen, uh, three and zero. Oh, came here and he's following his his dreams. And, and the coolest thing is we have, you know, we have the guys from Azerbaijan, from Chechnya, from Russia, from Afghanistan, from uh, Liberia, from and they're all speaking one Friends. language. Yeah, it's it's just That's you know amazing. the world climate goes away. Um, did you think it would turn out like this when you started Alpha Male? Like, what was the original goal of starting the team? I was just, I was passionate about it. I was recruiting my friends, um, like Chad Mendez and, and Danny Castillo and, um, Joe you know, Benavides Scotty Jorgensen and, yeah. and, um, even TJ Dillashaw back in the day was a guy that I had recruited in college to come to, to come to Cal Davis when I was still a, a, a coach. And so I was just like preaching this you know, Dustin Akbari, he was my training partner. He was like 15 or 16 at the time. And, 
and I was just passionate about what I was doing. I wanted to bring people with me and had like the vision to like fill in spots, which I've been doing, like, like see, see an opening, you know, fill the spot that, that goes with first MMA gym in Sacramento and, um, everything else. So I didn't really envision it. I just, you know, was having a lot of fun and following my passion and so here we are, baby. And, and now you're doing big things. So you just referenced it, and I saw you post on Instagram as well. What are you doing with Sacramento State? So Sac State, so um, luckily we've just got this new president, Luke Wood. He's a, a Sacramento guy, has his own amazing story in the foster foster uh, system from a young age. He, uh, he actually has some um, Jewish, Russian Jewish heritage that he didn't know about till, till later. Um, and he is a boxer. He's a Sacramento state guy that had it the hard way. And he loves mixed martial arts. And Aaron, the girl from, from India, Mm -hmm. he had a discussion with her about why she came to Sac state. This also happened with Tassandra, uh, from Australia about 11 years ago. You've met Tuss before. And, um, and she was there because of our gym. And so he, he came to me, started boxing at the gym and was like, man, I, I, I've just taken over. I love what you guys are doing here. And I have a vision to blow out this, this sport and be the first combat university where we, you know, put our stake in the, in the ground and say, this is the place to go to foster anything. And, and, you know, you made a career out of the sport too. You know, you love this sport and you're, the, you're in, a, in a field in the sport. Uh, I've got my partner, Tom Anderson, A1 Combat. We're doing our first event, Dana Tom's Whitish. Yeah, Tom's Dana Whitish, baby. What does that mean? Dana Whitish, he's just like doing things like Dana, but just way lower level. Okay, all right. Just blowing it. He's trying hard. <laughs> I, know, I, know he, I know he's trying hard. He, he writes to me about all your events. Yeah. And, trying to get some, um, some pub for it. So you, you've got a good guy in him. I really, Oh, he's amazing. And his wife, they, they kill it. And so we're doing our first event at Sac State, January 19th. Oh, wow. Uh, right. This is a one combat. Yeah. This is right across the street from my gym. Oh, amazing. And so what I've been talking about with Luke Wood and we've already started the process, we're dedicating a building on campus to where we're going to, uh, go through this uh, athletic commi- uh, the athletic department at Sac State, and we're, you know, bolstering up the, the, uh, you know, club programs with I'm making all the hires: boxing, jujitsu, wrestling, uh, Muay Thai, traditional uh, kickboxing, and we're all going to have departments. I also <clears throat> have talked and have the vision and intention of teaming up with them on all these projects I'm working on. You know, I talked a little bit about trifecta nutrition. I mean, we've got um, all this cutting edge thing. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the Rollbot BJJ. Have you yes, seen that? Yes, we actually have video of that. Where the where that's, the limbs? That's my company. Yes, I know that's your company. The limbs snap. They the it's 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 the beginning of AI with 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 our sport. Here it is. The Rollbot, yeah, the BJJ, and um, so this is Sam your Hans, my boy. You created this. So Sam Hahn was my old partner on Optical Panacea back in the day. We used to do those crazy pictures and stuff. Okay. And he's started seven years ago on this project. I remember I got back from, I think I would, uh, it was maybe China or, um, I can forget. I got home. He knew I was home. I hadn't heard from him for, for three years. He got off social media and everything. Turns out he'd been in his house that he turned into a factory wow. building these seven years ago. So he goes, he calls me at one. He's like, you get in Vegas. I saw you just landed. Come over to the house. I want to show you something. <laughs> he's got one of these robots tied up on a rope. His house is turned into a, he's got a, a mat on the front, on the, on the table, I mean, on the, in the front room. He's got computers in his master bedroom. He turned, he built his own vacuum system, built his own 3d printers and he's building these robots. So he's like, you got to test it. It's got joints and blah, 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 all this stuff. And the first one, he had like a face that would open up and you could put your iPad in there and you can watch DVDs mm-hmm. while you're doing stuff. And I got on it and I just go and broke it. And he was like, oh, you know, uh, two years later, he had the next version. Uh, two years after that, he had the next version. And now he's got like the most cutting edge AI. It's got sensors for different types of chokes. You can do trachea chokes and blood chokes. It's got um, joints that can dislocate it, it, it moves like a human. Um, What's and it like, called? 
Connor, so the robot. Robot BGG, right, right, right. drill the skill, baby. Yes, I love it. And, uh, Some people and Con- s- Connor just hit me up. He wants one. John Jones wants one. Really? We're we're building one. I'm gonna get one for for Connor with his for his yacht. I'm gonna get John Jones one, but we're building him and Gordon Ryan ones that fit their size. Uh, Rogan wants one. That's amazing. Um, we took him to the PI and and you can see some videos of guys doing it. But anyway, so. I've got that project on. I've got something called MMA Plus. It's it's about fan engagement. It's Web three type of stuff where we do you know one like one one in a lifetime kind of experiences that you can sign up for, and uh, on and that's the beginning of a whole another journey. I'm hopefully going to work with DC on that one. Okay, but um, <clears throat> we've got. Uh, you know, I've got I've had an MMA university for about eleven years that I I'd never launched mm-hmm. because you had the draft too, right? MMA draft, the combines, right, right, all that kind of stuff. Um, we did the first six combines, and and I've got like all that stuff rekindling. I want to do all that with Sac State. Use their 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 teachers. Use their their uh, their their bright young students. Use their facility. They're going to be using our gym and my property as an extension of the university where we run uh, kids that want to go pro, want to want to turn this, this sport into uh, their life, uh, a program. And so, um, you know, I, I have a vision of, of teaming up, you know, cutting edge development for products that we need um, and having a real university and, and the, the, the stuff that comes with having a university behind it. And um, no, it's been exciting. So you have the so to recap, you have the gym. You've got what you're doing with Sac State. You've yeah. got the the robot. Um, the, well, I've done some passive stuff too, like you know, Kudo popcorn, <laughs> the protein popcorn. But my point, I brought that to the UFC before. Well, I was I invested in that before it was at the UFC. Why were you so good at all of this? Like you were doing all this stuff. You know, I remember Form back in the day. Yeah. And I'll, like, I had a couple of clothing lines. Why? Sold that to K Swiss. Yes, I remember. Uh, you, John Jones, was uh, sponsored by them. But like, why were you so good at this and others so bad at this type of thing? Well, I don't want to say anybody's bad at anything, but I will say that, you know, you don't get to hear about my failures either. You know, I've had a lot of failures. Things that are cooking right now are cooking. A one combat. Uh, November 18th, UFC Fight Pass, and we go to Sac State January 19th. I think the vision for me has always been um, I get an idea. I'm not scared of failure. I'm not afraid to delegate, to share share the love. Um, one of my best attributes, in my opinion, has been, you know, and, and is, is connecting people without asking for something for it. Like a lot of people protect their relationships. I foster relationships, bring people together. Maybe they go do business together, great. The more success they have, they can always pinpoint back to me that, hey, you're right, put us in touch. And if I ever need something, I can go ask. Um, But also being kind of lucky, being at the the forefront of a, a brand new sport where things aren't set in place. And the biggest thing I can't even talk about yet, I kind of tease you with it, but I'm working on some really big things that I think is going to, help change the sport um, and help change my life and, and be possibly some other legendary fighters' lives as well, Ooh. which I'll, you know, give you first grab at. Oh, I love that. Unless Rogan has us, you know? Oh, that's just fucked jo- up. I'm just Jesus. joking, buddy. Oh, just I'm joking. Unless Rogan. <laughs> um, had, to throw, had to throw that no, in No, I appreciate that. But th- <laughs> do, that. Do you really appreciate it? No, listen, you I'm give me a little zinger, it. that's fine. <laughs> but but that, that, that speaks to my heart. I, I have to say... And I, I was talking about this, uh, I think it was with my wife recently, and I was like, man, I've officially become the old guy. Like, I've officially become the old guy. And so when I, th- like, even now, I, f- I feel like my eyes, like, when I think of you, WC and Arco Arena and Jens Pulver and Mike Brown and and, and all those, and then, like, I, I, it bothers me that I feel like people don't remember, that people yeah. don't appreciate. You know what I mean? It bothers It bothers me that people don't know who, you know, Leonard Garcia yeah. is and, and what I WC48. They did something about Leonard Garcia recently, but where is he now? And I think he's doing some big stuff, but yeah. The point is like, I, I just don't feel like the legends get the, the, that's why actually when I was watching the Francis fight, did you watch that in? Uh, yeah. And you see like the older Incredible. guys, it's so nice. It was so nice to see them front row being treated like kings. Yeah. And so I, awesome. I, I'm just wondering if you ever feel that way. Like if, I know you, um, you're too there's busy. There's been moments where, where you're like, ah, uh, but, you know, I'm a half, half cup, I half know. full kind of guy. And you, I feel like, and like, this is me really. And I feel like you're the same way. It goes, I'm family, dad first, 
second mentor, which I spend my time in the gym every day, um, mentoring, sometimes coaching, uh, and then entrepreneur entrepreneurship is, is the third thing, but you know, it goes in that order. So, and I feel like you're that, like when I think of you, I think of awesome family man from conversations we've had and everything else, uh, as of late, <laughs> you know, fighting for what's right in MMA space, honestly. Uh, okay. And, and then, and then, and then you're a journalist, you know? So, um, for me, just keeping the priorities straight has been big and, um, you know, I've got some really cool things that I'm working on that that I think are, are going to be big. Uh, Can I pitch you one? Can I pitch you yeah, an idea? Of because you're like such, you're almost like the Mark Cuban of this space. Like you've got, you're like Mr. Shark Tank. I will tell you. Yeah. If you look at some of the, the people's stories and I think of like Elon Musk and those kind of guys um, and they tell their stories, like I'm sure there's times where they felt like they didn't have much, but they're building to a bigger thing. I feel like I've stayed on that trajectory where I've, I always feel like I'm, I'm kind of struggling, but for the big... I've got massive things that I'm hoping and working for and believe that are going to happen. But let's hear the pitch. Okay. Well, I, I know they will happen, especially because some of these sound great. And I love the one with Sacramento State, but the pitch is... And it's it's not so much like I, I want, but actually someone told me that I should do this. Let me throw it your way. Independent MMA Hall of Fame. Mm. This needs to happen. Yeah. A Hall of Fame where people can come and visit and learn about the history and learn. And, and, and there's no ties. Just like the Basketball Hall of Fame <laughs> has nothing to do with the NBA. Just like the Football Hall of Fame has nothing to do with the NFL. Yeah. I, I don't hate the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah. I think it's great. And they've built it into a thing where International Fight Week, four or five guys have their moment. I love it. No yeah. one loves the history of the sport more than me. Yeah. But the the MMA Hall of Fame doesn't exist. And it's t this weekend, 30 years UFC. And Lord knows there's a history prior to the UFC, right? Yeah. There's the Pancrase this days. This weekend is the only, is the 30th. Yes. Reunion? I thought they already did the 30th. They've been doing it all year. All year, but ah. November 12th, 1993 is, is this See, Sunday. this is why you're the gym. But the, the, come on. Like there needs to be a place where a, a fan can go and learn about pride and learn about shooto and learn about pancreas and learn about a hook and shoot. Who's this Jeff Osborne who was the first guy to put women's MMA on cards here in America? And what was WEC all about in the freaking Tachi Palace days? Yeah. And, and, and who were these? Like there needs to be an MMA Hall of Fame. Someone told me, uh, I don't mind saying this, that I should pitch it to Mark Zuckerberg because yeah. he's now like developed this love of- uh, He loves the sport, huh? He just tore his ACL. I know, I got to send him a robot up in Tahoe. That's I got right. my buddy can fly right on, on the water. On the thing and he's actually been, I think he's he's big fans of Jan and he's a, he's a Jan Yao and Sage Northcutt. Yes. Yeah, we should go give him a robot. So what do you think? Do you think it's time? <clears throat> I do, here's the problem. This is the problem with all great ideas. And it's you're funny. seeing it even with like this antitrust thing. Oh yeah, like. Crazy somebody's got to dedicate all their time, energy, and effort to right. do it. I'm kids first, yeah. family first for my any spare time, then mentoring the next generation, then entrepreneurship. Um, you don't have time for anything. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I just <laughs> wanted to know if you think it's a good idea. It's a great it's, idea. It's about time, right? It is about time, but who's going to do it? Who's going to? There's it? a business there. You know, Sacramento has their own Hall of Fame thing. What they do is they invite who's who who's made it in the past and all of a sudden you've got these influential people that are there and they've somehow monetized it and but and can i just money. be honest i don't want to make a dime off of this you don't but somebody needs to if they want to put their time and energy you want to you want to do the things that are best i uh, want a place where people can go learn about ricardo arona and yeah. fedor Milinenko. you think you'll make it being 13 years in a row as the journalist of the year you think you'll make it do you think i'll make it what to 14 no, you think you'll you make the Hall of Fame as as, oh, I, I as thirteen? Care. I'm I just I'm just messing that. with you. I don't you. care about that. No, no, no. <laughs> I couldn't care less. Truth, truthfully, like I love yeah. Hall of Fames. Like I've been to the hockey, I've been to the basketball, I've been to the baseball. I haven't been to football just yet. But it just, the, I feel like the history of the sport is not celebrated enough. You know what I mean? I I, I know Hoist is going to be here this weekend, and like if it was up to me. This is a suggestion I threw out a long time ago. The UFC should have named its top 30 fighters to celebrate 30 years because that's what the NBA did. 50th anniversary, they they named their 50 greatest and they all came, all the living ones came to All-Star Weekend. Imagine <laughs> if they all came out. 30, the 30 best fighters in UFC history. Could you yeah. imagine what that would be like? It would be incredible. Yeah. You know, they're doing right now the the top 30 and I was actually a host on the on the second session of it with, with John Anik in, in DC. But... Um, 
where they're doing the top 30 of 30. And, and I was there, I had to interview Dominic Cruz and oh, wow. Johnson, those kind of guys, but I wasn't on the list that sometimes like that kind of thing, because I was 31, almost 32. You'd probably know better than I would when the UFC actually introduced my weight class. Yeah. Before that it was WC under yeah. the UFC, same company, different name. And so Demetrius Pettis. And so me never getting the UFC belt would exclude me on a, on a, that list. When nah, I was, that's, you well, were, it was, for, for, for them, I, I was excluded on the list. Really? For, it was owned by Zufa. It was the same company. All right. But, but I'm not saying that's why I'm just saying I yeah, was, so, sure. so, but then they included me by having me my, do the interview and whatnot. But you know, they said, Oh, well he didn't win the, win the UC belt. It was the same thing yeah. as far as anybody's concerned, but that, that, that kind of thing right there, there's a little technicality kind of sucks. Cause I was literally 31, almost 32 when some right. guys are out of their prime. Right when they introduced my career into the UFC and then I became a title contender, title, title, you know, uh, for that. Cool. And that was before you saw it and everything. And you know, you know, someone asked the other day on a, on an Instagram thing, if he thought I was natural, you know, more than anything, yes, you. like I'm, I'm, I'm an all natural guy through and through. And I could probably pinpoint some of the other guys that I would say absolutely were, but, um, you're the one that told me, no, bro, everybody's on stuff. Me? <laughs> you told me that. You got, because I asked you, and you're like, dude, a lot of people are on stuff. Well, this is Definitely. just from my conversation. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, you know, you, you yeah. sniff out the details, buddy. No, I, I don't have time for that. No, but I mean, <laughs> uh, people were a lot of people were on stuff back yes, then. Well, then there was the TRT era where everyone was like, it was allowed to be on. Yes, TRT. So it was a massive loophole. But does yeah. it bother you that you never won the UFC belt? I mean, does it bother? Do I waste any time thinking about no. it? No. Absolutely not. I mean, I would have liked to just to, to solidify, and I tried my hardest. Sure. I can hang my hat on that I got a lot of opportunities, and I trained my ass off of those and gave my best foot forward. And I actually thought I won the, the fight in 2011 with Dom as to debate. I mean, it, it, you know, he obviously thought he won. but that was um, a close-ass fight. It was a super close fight. I think it was, right? I don't know. Fuck, you know. I'm weird about but, that. Yeah, yeah, you know. But, uh, but, I mean, it wasn't like I got ripped off, but they could have easily said, with some of the calls, they, they could have easily said, yeah, you won. Right. Knockdowns, damage, you know, however you see it. So um, in, my, in my mind, I'm very fortunate to have been in the place that I have, performed the way I did, and um, have the clout that I do. I mean, I, I really, it seems like a daily thing where I'm getting opportunities. Actually, we just, we just uh, launched a wagernation.com. <laughs> once this other, once this other, uh, Sponsorship goes out. You call me because we'll get okay, you on board. Okay, oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate Nationwide, that. worldwide. Okay, nice. Wagernation.com. Uh, what about <laughs> what Anthony Smith said there? He said he's terrified of when the music stops. Did you have that? No. You know me. I, I, I left before I had to, and I knew I was doing it because I wasn't getting the excitement. The, the, right. The hair wasn't standing up on my neck. I was chasing big opportunities to get myself excited. You know, another title run, go and jump up a weight class to fight Frankie Edgar in the Philippines. Like trying to, the one that got the two last fights I had, three last fights I had, going into retirement, coming out of retirement, fighting Peter Yan that was a scary guy, those all got my juices flowing. And that's why I did it. It was never, I could, I, I have a lot of friends that have made a lot of money and I understand how to make money. And I was just talking to Jaslyn about this and she's like, you know, she has the same sentiment. She wants to, she wants to do things that she wants to do to make money. And I said, yeah, I, I get it. And so <clears throat> my thing is, uh, you know, it's a passion thing. And so I, I decided to leave when I wanted. I decided to come back when I wanted to. And, and that's a rare thing that you get to be able to do. And I, what I found was the reason I'm here coaching today with Slava and, um, and in the room every day, mentoring kids that are, you know, 15, 17, uh, you know, the guys are st Stav's 19, uh, Frosty just turned 18, uh, Aaron's 18 is because I, is, I'm passionate about it. And when I, when I was retired, I had about a week of, Oh, I can drink a beer every day if I want. I can eat ice cream every day if I want. But what did I find myself doing? The same routine I had done for the last 20 some odd years, my, my whole life. Go to the gym, play my sport, hang out with my friends, do my homework. 
And so I just found myself back in the gym and I was like, that's what I'm doing. And, but I'm, I'm waking up early and I'm doing all these different things to build a bigger, brighter future so I can have my jet someday and bring all the young kids with me. And, and, uh, you know, that, that's kind of what, what lights my fire is, is like continuing to. It's gotta to be grow. fun to, to take the newcomers like through the system, right? Oh, it's that, the best. It's like they're the wide eyed. Best. It's the best, like a Song Yudong, for example. The best for a Song Yudong is that his battle was not athletically or skill-wise. It was self-belief, and he had the motivation. He has the skill set. It's it, it was the mental side of things, not 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 giving when the go, going gets tough. And like I've seen marked improvements, which will make him a, a world champion. Now he's going to be the main event, I think, in Shanghai. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that's out there yet, but no, it's fine. Uh, is it fine? No, nah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I won't. I, I'm just blowing past it. It doesn't yeah. matter. So, why, why people care about these things, I don't know. It's just like it's yeah. just fights. There's going to be 13 of them on Saturday. Well, you care. You love fights. No, I'm just no, no, no. My point is like, gotcha. Okay, who okay. broke the news? Who sleep? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, silly. but 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 what I'm saying is a guy like that, where I can say, okay, everything's in place, but this little thing. I've got another guy, Andrew Coin, who's. Uh, been with me since he was a little kid and he was our first a1 combat champ at 145 and he's on the cusp of being in the ufc um but for him his battle was never the mental side he's as mentally strong as it gets he's coordinated learns good i mean learns well um <laughs> yeah and, sacramento state yeah sacramento. <laughs> yeah but uh go ags though that's that's an aggie that's an aggie statement there but um he needed to get stronger. So part of his regimen every day is is getting stronger as a career. I knew him before puberty, knew him after puberty. Wow. I was like, you're going to focus on strength. I never really had to do that, you know. Because you just had it God-given. Yeah. Or whatever lifestyle I lived right. on the way up, you know. Are you trying to bring an indoor football team to Sacramento too? So we were working on that. And we're still working on it. I mean. <laughs> How do you have time for all these things? Just great people in leadership positions. The guy, Roy Choi owns the team. My good friend, um, Dave Shapiro and his brother, uh, Ben Shapiro is actually leading the charge and bringing them there. Uh, this it's is a Ben Shapiro who does like the political commentary. Is it? No, I think Shapiro is a pretty common yeah, it is pretty name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Ben, Ben Shapiro, he has pivot agency and, and he's thinks that Sacramento would be a great place for it. And so we're still working on that. Yeah. Unbelievable. You're like the mayor of Sacramento still after all these years. So that's funny because I've I, a lot Have of you people, thought about it. Well, I've had all my buddies, a lot of my really good friends that are heavy set. I mean, heavy, heavy in the development and the business world who are seeing our city get run into the, the ground have asked me, um, you would win to, to go. And they're like, you'd be the most funded candidate and this and that. But you know me, I don't want to comb my hair. I wear sweatpants every day. <laughs> you flip know flops, yeah. flip flops you could be you do you have to I, mean, I don't know i don't know but then then for me i'm still trying to build business and yeah. and, the, and and i'd be a public servant for four years and they're like but after that four years then you can the keys are open because of the connections and i'm like i'm a very connected guy as is like and that's that's some of the stuff that's leading into the bigger things in my life and uh I don't want to handcuff myself to be a public servant. I can do some great things for Sacramento right now, Sac State, putting Sacramento on the map, Sacramento State on the map with the first ever uh, combat program. We've got our uh, the Hercules building that's the, the, the B mascot and, and my gym as a partnership and the team as a partnership. Uh, the, th the other things I'm working on, trying to do the, the MMA plus stuff, the... Uh, you know, all, all the different things. I'm with robot BJJ, like this is all cutting edge things. And, and I've tried to do, be on the cutting edge of, of things in the past, but I feel like, because like you said, you feel like I'm that person in the space that gets business br opportunities brought to you because it's, it's because of reputation, not burning people. Sure, it's sure. because of, you know, the brand that I built by, by being true. And, and so I'm getting all these opportunities and I get to, uh, you know, kind of sift through and say, what, what do I love? What do I don't love? And where can I add value? Where can I add value? And, um, 
I think the UFC, uh, the the MMA Hall of Fame is a great idea. It's it's definitely going to happen, right? It should it has to happen? Thirty. I mean, there's enough of a history now, and people who should be celebrated fights, promotions. I mean, it it will happen. I just I want it to happen in the right way. And uh, where you know, I've thought about. Who do you think? Like, think about when it, whenever I think about an idea. Yeah. I think. Who's going to be the best guy to run with it? And I'm doing that right now with Sac State. I'm 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 creating a a, a real job for a head guy that loves the sport for the right yeah, reasons. Yeah, I know for sure. Understands each thing. I don't know who, who that would be the guy. Is. I don't know who the person is. I'm not good at that part. I'm good at the idea part. And honestly, I don't even know if I should be involved. I just I just want to keep putting it out there in the ether, <laughs> and and hopefully someone hears this because it should be something that. Honestly, like I don't even know if it should make money. I mean, I'm I'm sure it has to make money to keep it up. Yeah, like, it has to make money. Uh, it's just I just want the sport and more importantly the fighters in the sport to have that place where you could go with your family and be like, yeah. man, these are my shorts from, you know, WEC. You know, you know who would be good. Who's that? You know, who would be good. This is the, this is an idea. That's what I think of because I I thought of Andy Foster right away. Oh, uh, the best. Andy Foster's the best. He's he's my favorite guy in the sport as far as like he's regulation. The best. best accent in California uh, too, man. Hey, yeah, you're right. You know, I gotta tell you, you're right. You know? <laughs> he's <laughs> you know? the best. And uh, he's doing the pension Lee, thing. Yeah, that's what I was gonna bring up. Yeah. You know, uh, but yeah. Lee Palmer, his right hand man, awesome guy in 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 Sacramento also. If those guys together could go with all the other commissions and say, uh, hey, guys, we want one representative yeah. from each commission to help Some put idea. together a unified Hall of Fame, that's who we should talk to. When I think of key people, great integrity. Andy Foster, number Andy one. Andy Foster. And I Lee wish Palmer. Andy Foster was, was overseeing the entire sport. I wish it was a national yeah. commission. And and there was one guy at the top, and it would be him. He believes in transparency. He 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 allows us to talk to the officials if there's something going on. He puts things out. The absolute best. He's great. And then what he's doing with the pension is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Pen, the pension, and I went down there. Josh Emmett, Andre Feely, uh, Rhonda's mom went down, uh, and 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 spoke, and they've passed it that there's now a a pension for MMA fighters in California, which huge. Which is a huge step in the right they direction. Had it for boxers, yeah. Uh, now for my fight. By the way, how is your sister doing? She's amazing. She's good. She's, she's got all a, good. A six-month-old beautiful baby, Violet, wow. and Congrats. her husband Max is a is an awesome uh, human being. He's an officer, and and uh, and they're living the dream. They're okay. living the American so no, dream. No, uh, issues from no the issues, accident. Yeah. That was scary How about stuff. you? How's your family? When was the last time you plugged uh, 20? My brother. <laughs> David plugged your brother, man. Your, yes. your mom will love that you're plugging your brother. I know. And she's you know? probably watching right now. You were, her, you were her favorite. Uh, <laughs> yes, I haven't plugged it in a while. You're Who's right. your mom's new favorite? You know. She's been following still? I, it's she not probably as, just has enemies now like you now. Mm, like some people that are her least favorite. Because of how they treat her son. Yeah, of course. Oh, my know? mom. My mom. When someone <laughs> treats my... She's me bad. My yes. mom's going. That's why she never came to a fight. She'd be in the ring. Not to, one. Trying to. Sl- she's never been to one fight. Wow. She'd be trying Not to even fight like people. Sacramento heyday. Head- Zero. Wow. Zero percent. Did you try to get her to? No. Because you didn't want her to be uncomfortable. Is it because she- I never? Uh, we my my parents were hardworking parents who showed me love and support, but it was never a thing for my parents to be at my sporting events. Like my dad could make it when he could make it. My mom would come sometimes and it wasn't like, I was always like looking for where right, right, my right, parents. Right, right, right. I just, I didn't need it. Didn't, it wasn't the thing. And, and so it's pretty common for, you know. Did your dad go to your fights? Yeah. All of them? Uh, as many as he could. Okay. Yeah, as many as he could. Wow. Yeah, yeah he was, he was, if you ever get the clip of, of my very first fight, I'm fighting Charlie Valencia. Wow. Wearing shoes. You could still knee in the head on the ground. You could kick in the head, I think. You could do everything. Um, and he puts me up against the cage, and I see my dad going nuts in the front row, just ah, screaming. And I smile at him, and I give him a head nod like that. And then I do a, 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 a throw that I still show today where I step over and toss him on his head. But it was my dad. I give my dad a, a smile and a nod like, hey, man, chill out, bro. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is you best. in a nutshell. Um, you and Dom, good. Oh yeah. How did that get solved? There was always like I never really had that big of a problem with Dom. I enjoyed having an enemy, and mm-hmm. and and there was like a there was a time where he wanted what I had. I feel like, and yeah. he he had a little chip on his shoulder about it, and so he was doing some things that were immature at the time. I feel like he grew up. He more than 
created his own name and in, in, in some ways surpassed, even as this is commentary and things like that and multiple championships, world championships in the UFC. Um, I think the chip got off his shoulder. We had a really unique event um, before our third fight or maybe our second fight. I can't remember. I think before our second fight um, where the PR people with the UFC, maybe a changing of hands, just kind of overlooked and put us like a month before our fight was announced together on a um, team building type of PR event where we went to go see the uh, see the the Marine station in, in San Diego. Okay, you've got to have heard this story before, but we're there to oh. meet people, and all of a sudden we get drill sergeants in our face. They give us backpacks, and we do a whole day of the Crucible, which is like a three day journey that they have to do to. to 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 like become a marine where people quit and everything else is like sleep deprivation and we were like getting yelled at about the dead soldiers and we're it was it was me and rich Fr franklin and uh yeah maybe michael bisbee i can't remember who else and uh we actually had to we we're getting like berated about like the fallen soldiers and what it meant and like we had to work as a team to do things and so we had like a two-day stint where we like actually became kind of friends and uh, and then we went right back to like, but now you're good. Enemies. But we always communicated after that, even uh -huh. if it was to talk a little, talk a little trash. Right, right. It'd so now like, you see him though. You yeah, I liked him, and he actually remember when I retired, he he he's handed me a yeah, yeah. poster. I don't know if he had signed the over the face of it or not, but it was like you know he's made an effort, and I've made an effort to to be cool. What if you saw TJ? I think TJ's back in my area. Like, I don't know. I'm, I I don't really. What does that mean? Like living? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a friend who's like, hey, TJ just bought a house right next to me or something like that. <clears throat> and honestly, I don't know. That was such a weird transaction and how the whole thing went. We have a lot of mutual friends um, that I don't know how much in contact he is and, or isn't. But, um, you know, I've got a lot of a lot of great friends. But like, if you, have you ever seen him somewhere and you guys shook hands i don't think so wow that's wild we probably will now that we're in the same area we have some sure some good but like at there. flights or something i thought maybe i've walked by him once or twice at the thing but and no no words exchanged yeah. that one's a little deeper yeah i mean i'm going to let bygones be got bygones but you, you don't know. seem like a grudge holder you know i don't I don't like negativity in my life. If there's negativity there, I'll squash it. But even like, like a guy like, you know, there's a time where James Irvin and Scott Smith, do you remember, you know them, course, obviously. Yes. I was in the corner for uh, Scott Smith when he got hit in the, in the liver. Pete Sell. And Pete Sell ran after me, knocked him out. I was in the corner there. And James Irvin, I've been in the corner for him multiple times. Um, and then they were working for me at my gym and then they went and they opened their own gym that I, I was like upset about that at the moment. And... Now James Irvin is like, he's my best, my best uh, resource really? running my gym in, in Rockland, running the gym in Folsom. He's like, we forgave and forget, forgot everything and, and we're great. So um, I'm never like a grudge holder kind of guy, but I, I don't, I don't like negative energy. So if there's any negative energy there, I'll just avoid it. Any idea where Scott Smith is? I heard he moved out of Sacramento. I, he drove by the gym at one point a few years back, and uh, and I think he moved maybe to Idaho or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I feel like guys like that. Scott Smith, Pete Sell, legendary fight. Yeah. Should be in the Hall of Fame. People don't know it. James Irvin runs a tight ship at, at the gyms. Wow. And I said, and he's got, he, I have three gyms in the area, Rockland, Folsom, and, and East Sac is, is, my, is my, like, the main gym. Um, but James is awesome, man. And he's got, I got, I go, bro, put up your poster with Anderson Silva in the gym and put up your flying knee. I mean, what a legendary, yeah. le legendary guy. We've got, uh, you know, a great thing going there. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's been pretty cool, man. Well, I'm very happy for everything that you have going, everything you just mentioned. Uh, I do want to give another plug to A1 Combat because that's probably yeah. the next thing coming up. You said yeah. November 18th. We've got November 18th, we've got a huge card at the Hard Rock Casino. We've got January 19th. Which Hard Rock Casino? Hard Rock Casino Sacramento, which is on the outskirts of Sacramento. Okay, okay. And then um, our first ever, and this is kicking off our big program at Sac State, on-campus fight with uh, 
a January. stat card, January 19th. It's literally, you walk across the street. My property is here from my gym. You walk across the street and, and you can walk onto campus um, and do that. Amazing. And, and watch that. Check out the robot. Robot, you know, it's funny. We're about to do this, uh, this um, crowd campaign for the robot because the robot's expensive. Yeah, I heard. Sam's been sitting here. Over 4K, office, right? It's over 4K, which, you- which is still a deal because Sam Hahn builds every single one himself. Oh, wow. And he's moving down to Sacramento. We're going to do a crowdfund to get the cost down because, I mean, the, the, the usage of a, of a robot, and we're, and we're in, I, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, Sac State's in the process. I talked about using their resources. They're in the process of hiring uh, new computer and AI staff, like I think they're going to hire seven new, which is really rare to hire seven in one department to, to get on that AI kick. Uh, and the AI, you know, is, is, it's, it's a game changer for everybody. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Gary V. We have our like monthly meetings with the athletes that are under Gary V's oh. company, Vayner sports. Yeah. And, uh, and he, his advice maybe a year ago was like, AI is everything, get on AI. And so Sac State is hiring, in the process of hiring seven new AI uh, professors. Wow. And with the robot and what Sam Hahn knows, he's like an expert on AI, an expert on all the equipment and everything. I feel like we're gonna be able to do some really cutting edge things in the MMA space with an online university, which I already have you know, in the, bu- in the bank, uh, the robot and, and building off of the robot and, and really learning a lot about, um, you know, how to use AI in the future of MMA. Look at you. This would be cool. Always one step ahead. Uh, Slava Claus on Saturday. And Jamal Emers is actually out of our team also fighting. Okay. He's the first fight of the night. Yes. Jamal Emers, another That's great story. That's Bazooka, right? Bazooka. Yeah. And Jamal is, I mean, talk about a solid dude with a... Uh, You're cornering both of them? I'm not cornering. No, okay. he's got his coach Jake there. Okay. And, uh, and I'm cornering Slava. Have you cornered anyone at MSG yet? I don't know. You'd know better than I would. Yeah. Probably. MSG's I know I've pretty... seen the hotel I'm staying in, but I also fought in New Jersey a couple times. Right. I remember that in Newark. Did I fight here in New York? I don't think I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I know I feel you didn't cor- you didn't corner uh <clears throat> did you corner Cody Garbrandt when he fought TJ here? No. I was here for that. Maybe that was it. Mm, no. So Newark was the closest. So, Hannah Brow, 169. Ariel, when we yeah. get the program going at yes. Sac State, yeah. come do a guest speaker on Oh, on, I'd love to. As the as the world champion um journalist guy? Journalist guy? I'd love to. I love talking to kids. Yeah. Students actually one day want to teach a class. We we're gonna have look, when this thing goes, we're gonna we're gonna build this into something that's really amazing at Sac State. When you're you know, money's in the bank and yeah. you want to do something fun that is your passion hopefully we'll be either an example for what's going to happen or you can come out to sacramento and bring the family out and, i'd love that and, sacramento always a, a a near and dear place in my heart because of those early days how's your wife everyone's good thank you kids kids good your Yours mom well. your wife's your mom's doing good my mom's doing great my dad's doing great my brothers are doing great yeah my wife is jacqueline yours is jocelyn although jaslyn jaslyn yeah but not married what working you, on it. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. We, I know. I got you. What are we waiting for? I got you. What are we waiting for? Uh, that, Will I get invited to the wedding? Do yeah. I make the cut or? Well, probably not. We The way mm. we want to do it is on the beach, very private. Okay. Jack Johnson, if you ever watch this show, to have you uh, play our song. Um, is that the dream? I feel like you can make better it together. Happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to talk to Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater's my oh, boy. God, I love Kelly yeah. Slater. It, we, Top on the 10 beach. like coolest human beings on the planet that oh, He's amazing. I'm going to go out there hopefully to his wave pool oh, sick. Um, somewhere in November and and try to get a little bit better because I'm, I'm not a very good surfer. Okay, so the dream is somewhere on the beach, wedding, Jack Johnson is playing your song. What song yeah. is this? Better Together. Better Together. That's your song. Yeah. There you go. Kids walk out, flower. Man, I love the idea that my daughter, I mean, I'm sure you see on occasion, but she's like... She could plan the friggin' thing. She's four. She wow. could plan the thing. That's how advanced my my little daughter is. And then Rome, <laughs> he'll be the dancer. <laughs> I love it. He maybe, looks, maybe male stripper. We'll see. He looks kind of like a mini version of you, Rome, right? Like so blonde I, hair. So I, I like yes at a first glance. And Jaslyn, Callie looks like Jaslyn's right. twin, right, like right. identical twin. And 
from a first glance, but she's got my mom's face okay. and, and Jaslyn's skin. And Rome has Jaslyn's face. That's why he's so beautiful. <laughs> and he's got my skin, my hair color. Right. And my stature, poor guy. But he'll he'll do he'll be all right. <laughs> well, you don't you don't know you don't know. He's like, well, how old is he? Two. Yeah, his grandpa, his grandpa on the mom's side. You know, he he played uh, six years pro football as a in oh, the wow. Canadian league. Actually. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, Wait, he, on on your wife's side? Yeah, six years in the what team? Do you know? Uh, what is it? Edmonton. Edmonton. They were the Eskimos at the time. Eskimos, and there's also the one. What's orange? Orange. Edmonton Eskimos. He played on a couple of them. He was the he was the rookie of the year. Wow. His first year. And so he's six one. He could do a full flip with bat with pads on at six six foot one, two, two hundred and ten pounds. So maybe Rome will get a little bit of that. Callie's got his his speed already, I think. If they want to be fighters, would you let them? I think Callie's gonna want to do it. She's been I gotta show you these videos. I'll make a I'll make a, a reel of it. But I went to her kindergarten. She's in Span or not kindergarten, her preschool, Spanish immersion preschool, to talk about what I do for a living. And so I I talked to him about that I was a prize fighter and I'm also a mentor and a coach and 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 this and that. And I had all the kids get up and show her stuff. Oh uh, sick. And so the other day at breakfast, she's I'm 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 making breakfast and she's in the kitchen. She's like, Dad, you think you're a teacher? You teach people how to fight? And I said, uh, yeah, kind of, I do. And she go, I go, I need to work with you a little bit more. And she goes, <laughs> you forgot, Dad? I know how to fight. And, I, and then she jumps into her stance that I showed her once in her class and puts her hands right up to her face. I'm going to post this probably today now. And she starts throwing these, these straight punches. And I'm like, coach her through it. And then she goes... And then she says, and then she makes up her own punch with a double punch and a double punch with a kick. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, she's like, I could teach my friend. She's, I said, who are you going to teach? She names off all of her friends. And then she, you know, little t sneaky Tommy, his son's Dash. She wants to marry Dash. Okay. And she's like, uh, Sloan and Dash, you think Dash knows how to fight? <laughs> and I said, uh, not like you. And then she, uh, it's, it's this great video. I'll show you after. So if she, she does, if she does want to do it, you, you're cool with that? I'm cool with it. I, I, I'm not going to encourage it. I'd like tennis. Sure. Yes. Uh, golf. Right. Uh, but you won't, she wants to be her. a doctor, a fighter, a sure. police officer. You um, won't stop her from doing it, but you no. won't say like, if she decides to do it right. on her own, yeah. I will go all in and be the, the Floyd Mayweather family. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. absolutely. You know, I'm not sure. 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 I'm open-minded. Like your like, pop hippies. Yeah. My pop, my mom. Yeah, your dad's the thing. man. He's Thank doing you. well. Oh man, he's gonna love to hear. He's gonna love he's to the hear. The freaking man. Oh, he's the best. He, 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 no one has had my back more than your dad That's right. over the years. That oh, my dad. My dad is a diehard uh, fan of yours. Love that guy. <laughs> love him. Yeah, he's great. He'll be watching, and and uh, you know we're gonna also do uh, on top of everything else. Faber, Faber and Sons Construction. I always remember as a kid he had his little business card, Faber and Sons Construction, and so he's done. My gym, my Victorian, oh, wow. my building on the northern coast. He's done, uh, you know, a lot of stuff for me when it comes to construction. So he built my house. Yeah. Good guy to have. Uh, yeah. This has been and tremendous. With my brother Ryan, Uncle, of course, Uncle Ryan, yes, 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 the best uncle on the planet, who also is a manager at my gym and runs the whole department of, of uh, like, fixing up the gym and, and keeping it running tip top. Awesome. Well, much love to the Fabers. This has been great. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have to thank, he may not be watching, but I have to thank Lloyd, Lloyd Pearson, who told me you were in town uh, and told me to hit you up. That's how I, I remember to do so. So thank you to Lloyd, who I know yeah. you work with as well. For, Sports. Yep, for the uh, recommendation. <laughs> so great to see you. Yeah, oh, was there another thing? I was just going to say, we talked about your your wife. She's a, she illustrates books. Yes, yes. And I still need a have book? that. I have that that Cali book that I wrote before she was born. I'm gonna go back and see how accurate it was because I wrote a whole. This oh, is how wow. Cali is gonna be, and I wrote a little something for Rome that I didn't finish before he was born. But we can still talk about. Yeah, you know, me and you going into business among your me 48. Your me and your wife. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, don't try to steal then, my thunder, man. Just <laughs> like you true. do with your brother, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, How's your brother's favorite? clothing doing? It's going great. It's going great. Twenty twenty tees dot com. Okay. You want right. some? Yes. Okay. Is that mainly what's going on? No, I didn't think. I think mostly he makes stuff for people that are about six foot yes, eight. Yes, a lot of basketball I, players. I, maybe I could maybe wear a pants for the whole outfit. Or maybe the kids. 
What I'll do is a pair of pants. Yes. I'll cut holes in it, and it'll be a summer well, outfit. No, you can fit. You can fit. He, he has he has women's stuff. It's just a, it's just a. No, I just a, I just I just you have a lot of success, and I want you. Yeah, to, I want to share spread, the love, yeah, man. No, that's the kind of guy yeah. you are. Yeah. Uh, Uriah Faber, everyone, the California kid here to corner uh, Vicious Love, who we just met. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Thank you for coming in. This was great. First guest ever in the history of the program, June of two thousand nine, yeah. with the broken hand. In the really? bed. You tweeted the picture. You said, I'm about to do an interview with Aria Hawani on his podcast, and it was you in a hotel room in Los Angeles, and you had a cast on your hand. You have no recollection of this. I will find that tweet. Okay, yeah, I'm going to send it. it to you. Yeah, X. Um, it's not an, I'll, it's, sorry, it's an X. Sorry, I'll find that post. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel, so please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.